Peter Klein's wardrobe for the standard is provided by Sam Tanny and Son Tailors in Langley. Men's and women's tailoring. Sam Tanny and Son. Fitted for you. Fitted right. I'm back with former BC Premier Bill Vanderzam. He's leading the effort to scrap the HST. And he's joining me from his home in Ladner, BC. So there, there seem to be two issues. One is a financial issue, how it's going to affect my pocketbook as a, as a resident of BC. And the other is a political trust issue. I want to, I want to address both of those. But let's get to, down to the numbers first. When we, when we had you on a few months ago, when, when you started this campaign, one of the things you pointed out is that people who are buying new homes are going to be hit hard by the HST. They're going to be paying more. On the government's website, they, they give a, a new home HST calculator. And if you plug in uh, $550,000 for a new home, the, the difference between the current tax system and the HST system is zero, according to their website. Is that, do you, do you debate the numbers there? Well, I haven't looked at the website, so I don't know. But you but know, do you believe uh, that I can tell it will you, cost more? I can tell you that if you're buying a home uh, under a half million dollars, uh, you're probably paying six or seven thousand dollars more than what you did previously. They've left the property purchase tax in place. They've criticized it, but they're hanging on to it because it produces them for a lot of revenue. And now they're adding all of this on top. Yeah, if you're buying a home, five hundred thousand dollars, you're probably only paying only. That's a lot of money, mind you. Six or seven thousand dollars more than what you would otherwise pay or are already paying. If you go beyond that, you're paying the full shot. So, sure. And there aren't too many homes under a half million dollars, especially in the greater Vancouver area or anywhere in the lower mainland. So it's, uh, it's going to cost big time. Mm -hmm. But it's the poor, it's the people on low fixed incomes, it's the elderly, it's the working families. They're the people that are going to be hit hard. Because if, they, if the government figures are correct, and I doubt they are, but if they are correct and they say they're only going to take in an extra $2 billion a year in HST over what it is they took previously, take the $2 billion figure, I think it's probably 50% lower than what it really is, but take that number and divide the population of BC into that and you're looking at $500 extra per year for every man, woman and child in the province. Right. Pretty big hit on the average family, pretty big hit. In the meantime, the big corporations are laughing. They get the benefit. Right. I mean, one of the arguments, though, is that uh, for the HSD is that it, it's a it's a progressive tax, and that if you if you're wealthy and you're spending a lot of money in houses, you're going out to dinner a lot, you're buying things that that are going to be taxed, you're going to actually be paying a lot more than the average guy on you know on a on a fixed income who's probably not going out to eat all the time, not going out and buying luxury items that are, that are being charged HST. I guess that's how the income tax works. And they've lowered the income tax. HSBC, a big bank, uh, headquartered in Hong Kong, is paying 28% income tax. I live here. I work here. I contribute to the province. I pay 44% income tax. So, you know, this whole bit about being regressive or progressive is so much garbage. Right. Uh, this tax is going to hit the poor people. If you're rich, you might spend a lot of time in Palm Springs or Hawaii, and you're not spending it locally. If you're poor, you have to spend locally. You've got no choice. You can't escape it. You can't go to Washington. You can't go to Alberta. You can't go to Hawaii or Palm Springs. You're stuck here. You're paying the tax. It's totally unfair. Well, the other, the other issue that you've raised, and certainly the last time we spoke, and, and in, in, in pretty much all of your speeches recently, is uh, a political trust that um, your argument is that the Premier planned to do this, planned to bring in this HSD from the beginning, and there's some, some evidence to, to back that up now, um, but uh, didn't campaign on it and brought it in after he was elected. What, what proof is there that, that this was really calculated from the beginning? Well, you know what? You can't deal with the federal government in weeks. It takes a long time to deal with the federal government and to conclude an agreement such as they quickly signed after the election. So uh, it's not believable. And it, if I wanted to believe it, that's fine. But there's hundreds of thousands of people out there in the province, throughout the province, that say, we don't believe it. And when you get that many people not believing, chances are they're correct. 
The, but the federal Tories are not taking any heat, don't seem to be taking any political heat for this. Um, why is that? They should take heat too, but they're far removed. And you know what? We're giving a provincial jurisdiction given to us constitutionally that a provincial direct tax for provincial purposes can only be collected by the provincial government. We're giving it to the federal government. Hey, they're going to be controlling the tax. It becomes a federal tax. And that's scary in itself. Because like you say, when they're a long way removed, they don't have to catch the flack like the people locally. Keep the tax in B.C. Where, where are you now with this campaign? I mean, do you, do you really honestly believe you're going to be successful in getting the 10 percent of votes? I honestly believe we're going to be successful. I guess I wouldn't be traveling the province and spending all of my time away from the business and the family if I didn't think we were go weren't going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win big time. We're not giving up until we win. And we're going to continue the process. We're going to go to recall if need be. And after that, if we still have to continue to make sure that we democratize the process and make initiative referendum and recall workable will still carry on. I mean, I'm sure you know that one of the, the criticisms or, or perhaps suspicions about what, about what you're doing is that this is, a, this is an effort to get your name back in the headlines. Certainly, it's very successful in that way. People are talking about Bill Vanderzam, and they weren't a year ago, um, that, that there may be a sort of a political, uh, political opportunism here. Do you have any political ambitions beyond uh, running this, this referendum? I have no political ambitions. Frankly, I didn't know what I was getting into when I first agreed to take this on. I didn't realize it was going to be that big a job. It's full time for Lillian and I. We're working at this from early morning to late at night. When I'm not traveling, I'm doing faxes and emails and you name it. So it's busy. And it's pretty sad when a fellow like me, who should probably be sitting in an easy chair, not having to worry about this, has to get out there and fight big government to protect the average person, the middle income earner and the low income earner and the people on low fixed incomes. It's pretty sad, but that's how it is. And I guess I've got the profile that helps the process and I'm happy to be doing it. Well, Mr. Van der Zem, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. You can find out more about Bill Van der Zem's efforts to quash the HST by visiting fighthst.com. Coming up next, will the World Cup of Soccer in South Africa be safe? Is it really on Al-Qaeda's hit list? A former BBC reporter will be here to talk about it. That's next.